Thanks for the info. Steve, go ahead. Uh, Ron, are you going to that um, BC Hydro convention in September? No, that's next year. Uh, that's next year. So, next year. oh, okay. In, in the, just hold on a sec. I just got, uh, so in the newsletter, um, I sent out the uh, announcement uh, that the Vancouver was chosen for the, um, for the big world um, EV, uh, I guess, EV trade show, um, which is, which is pretty impressive. But this year it's in San Diego. So I've, I've highlighted that in red. So uh, if you're in California, that's uh, it's in San Diego this year and next year I'll be in Vancouver. So um, uh, I thought that was interesting. And, you know, it's, it, as I think I, did I think I mentioned last or maybe talked on the Thursday show, you know, the 2020, 20, what is it this year's 2022, 2023 um, is going to be the year of the EV cars. Like, I mean, all the big car companies are bringing out, um, their uh, their EVs and um, the Bolt, of course, in 2023 will be starting at twenty three thousand dollars. So we're seeing we're see going to see cars coming out of all prices, not just the sixty eighty thousand dollar ones, but you're seeing electrification as a big year. So it's going to be a fun year, twenty twenty three. Uh, lots of models to choose from, and those of you who have been following the uh, Volkswagen, the new Volkswagen bus that is going to be all electrified. Man, I would buy one of those in a heartbeat if I had an extra hundred thousand dollars. They are so cool, and they just started the news report this morning. The factory in Germany just started production, so they will. Uh, so they are going to be uh, they're going to be available shortly. But uh, lots of cool stuff happening. So uh, I think next year will be fun, and I think I'll go over to the show. I mean, it's not that far for me to pop over to Vancouver and go to the show next year. I think I think I'm going to do that. Ron, for yeah, most of those. For most of those small electric vehicles, I'm surprised they don't give you a shoehorn to go with it because it's yeah, about the only way you're going to fit into it. Yeah, and I and, and I don't know the bolt. The picture of the bolt was uh, certainly the old one I couldn't fit into, and I wouldn't want to do that because I've always driven suburbans and big trucks, right? But I don't know the new one. It's it's just a, an image, and it looks like it's a little bit bigger and made more for just two people. I don't know. We'll have to see see how. But of course, there's going to be lots of choices, right? There'll be lots of different companies, lots of different cars. And so 2023 will be the big year for EVs coming out. Yeah, the Hondas and the Kias are, are pretty good size, and they're in the 35,000 range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I've seen a boat, uh, a newer one, and it's bigger than what I thought it would be. Yeah, the iconic, I went down, look at the iconic five, you know, the uh, high Hyundai. Hyundai, Hyundai, Hyundai. Yeah, and that's, uh, it's interesting, you know, except I just want, as we get older and seniors, I want something that I don't have to get down to get into, you know, like I want to sort of, and, and so I'm sort of left at sort of a, sort of an SUV or something where I can, because <clears throat> I don't want to be sitting low and then have to get up, you know, it's harder getting in and out of car, you know we're seniors right it's harder to get in and out of things so it's it's i want something a little easier than just a sedan so um we gotta so anyway i don't know i mean it's it's a it's going to be an interesting time right exciting yeah lots of lots of new stuff happening it's sort of a bummer this year because nobody's got any cars nobody's got any you know the chips are all short and you know it's just you know they haven't really got their evs going so it, next year will be the fun year so we, we need to, we need to talk a lot about cars next year well that uh, image that was on the newsletter where you had the guy standing beside the truck or the bus or whatever it was i sort of recognized the picture but i couldn't quite make out who it was so then i read further down and it said robert llewellyn i went oh he got out it actually is well, the last time I saw him, he wasn't anywhere near. He put on a hell of a lot of weight in the last few years, obviously. But uh, he was one of the, the big stars of uh, Red Dwarf, which is uh, one of the best comedy science fiction series of all time. If you've never seen it, it's definitely worth uh, getting a hold of and watching. But uh, Robert Llewellyn, he is a really intelligent guy. He's... He, he makes the other the other guys on the show look like complete idiots. <laughs> it, is um, in, it is in San. So if you are in the San Diego area, it is it is uh, 
it's in San Diego this year. I think it's in, I don't know. I think it was, was it September it was in? I, uh, anyway, it's in. It might be a worth tri a trip to go to that. Yeah. Dude. Um, Drew just posted something in the uh, chat about the Samsung Smart Switch, and he says it can be installed in the, on the Motorola's. So it must be available in the uh, in the Play Store. Very good. Good morning. I've used uh, <clears throat> yeah. Gordy, Gordy, uh, Gordy is here. Gordy Bellick. Gordy, did you get your watch working? Um, yeah, I wanted to give you an up, uh, update on on that homework assignment you gave me. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, well, I made a video about, so I've made a video about mine, so I got a 10-minute video. So in two words or less, how did yours work? <laughs> yeah, I saw you, uh, your agenda, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. Um, so on the, uh, for those of you that weren't on the call last week, uh, Ron wanted me to use my Apple Watch because I use Apple Pay a lot on my iPhone. And I've never used my Apple Watch to uh, to make a payment. So um, my wife and I, we were at uh, Chili's restaurant uh, this past week. And Chili's restaurants here in the US, they have a payment device right on the table. Oh yeah, and, that's right, yeah. And it's used for other things too, game playing and, and whatnot, but I was using it for the payment and I have used it for payment using Apple Pay in the past where I just use my phone, my iPhone and it, it works fine. Uh, so prior to going to Chili's, I had to go into my iPhone, into my oh, yeah. app, and set it up so that my credit card would work on my Apple Watch. So it was very easy to do. So that was done. Uh, so I were paying the bill at Chili's and I couldn't get the Apple Watch to make the payment. Uh, it asked for you to double tap on your side button on the Apple Watch, which I did. And, and I tried different parts of the, the box there at, at Chili's and I couldn't find the hotspot apparently. Anyway. I didn't get it to work, but then I used my Apple phone and made uh, the payment using my Apple phone with Apple Pay. So I need to try it again. Oh, so it didn't go through. Well, that's interesting. I wonder why. I, I think it'll work. I, I think uh, it's probably operator error. Hmm. All right. Well, um, okay. Uh, well, let us let us know. Um, I'm interested to know because right. um, uh, I, I don't have an, an iPhone, so I, I don't... Uh, I can't actually, but uh, use Apple, Apple Pay, but, uh, and I'll explain all that in the video today. You'll, you'll see all about it, but uh, it should, it should work quite easily. I wonder, I think um, so. yeah. So anyway, you'll, um, you'll see, see all, uh, all the uh, things uh, in the video today. So we'll see what happens. I, I've been using my watch all week. In fact, I went to the restaurant last Friday. I took Gail out for a birthday dinner or lunch and, um, I was with a whole group of people, right? And so the uh, waitress came around, different restaurant than the week before, right? And mm -hmm. so, so she, she, you know, so they, uh, she, young girl, and and she said, I said, oh, I'd like to pay with my watch. Oh, she says, really, you can do that? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> and and of course, of course, all the people at the table are egging me on, you know, ah, it's not going to work, it's not going to work. And I said, look, I said, I'm tech with senior. I said, I can do this. And, and people in the restaurant are looking over at me thinking, you know, who is this guy, right? So anyway, <laughs> she brings the little machine around and I said, okay. And I held my wrist up and I said, watch this. And I, I oh man, if this doesn't work, I'm going to look like such an idiot, right? <laughs> anyway, as I, I rolled over my wrist and it, <laughs> I, I just brought it close to the machine. It went bleep and it, and, and it worked perfectly yeah. well. So I said to her, I said, you know, I said, if, she said, oh, I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home and do that. I've got an I, an Apple Watch. And I said, yeah, you should. It's really cool. And I said, just remember, an old guy taught you how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so 
you know, the, the, the big reason for doing this is that ah, cool, you know, you can be cool now and you know, we can be young at heart, right? You don't have to be. And I thought she's going to go back and she's going to tell everybody, oh, this old guy at the restaurant showed me how to, how to use my watch for, um, for paying. And I thought, yep, there you go. So, so we can spend a lot of money just practicing them. Yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> yeah. Well, I was going to pay for it anyway, right? You know, so this is a, this is really cool. Anyway, that, but you'll see, I don't want to give away everything because it's all in my video today. Jim, you'll go be ahead. streaming on TikTok in a, in a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I picked Jim, up my Samsung on Friday, the salesperson told me that they were um, promoting their new Samsung watch starting uh, this week. And all the ads would be coming out on that because I was interested. They've got the Galaxy Watch 4, but I don't think the 5 is out yet. Like they haven't been promoted. There's nothing really being about the 5. There's the Galaxy Watch 4, but I don't think they've got uh, the the 5 is coming, but it won't be out for a while yet. Yeah, well, she didn't, she didn't specify. She just said that there was a new promotion coming out this week. Maybe it was, for, maybe it was a sale. Maybe there it was a sale. Reducing the price. Yeah. You'll want to watch, you really want to watch the video carefully because there's a couple of snafus in this and uh, you got to be careful if you're, because I think, I think everybody's going to want to use the watch. The watch is really cool. And, you know, there's all, all, a lot of advantages to using a watch, but there's a couple of snafus in this and you have to be careful with it. So that's why I made the video and, I, and you really got to watch the video. So I'm not going to tell you all about it because then you won't stick around and watch the video, right? You keep well, telling Chris us, Chris and Jim are telling us something and then you say you're not going to tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> I better go get my watch because I've set up Samsung Pay, but I haven't used it yet. Okay. Neil, go ahead. Uh, um, I finally found the manual for the Fitbit. I've started reading that. Now, whoever was talking about never reading manuals, um, it's going to take me a while. <laughs> I made a video. The video today is so, <clears throat> it's all about Fitbit, and it's so simple. Neil, just watch the video. Oh, I'm going to watch. <laughs> Welcome back to Chris and Jim. Hope you had a great trip. Oh, there he is, yeah. Hey, how's everybody doing? Thank you very much. We're glad to be back. Chris is on another call right now, but she'll be here in a minute. We had a wonderful time. I'll put the link to the photo album in the in the chat here. Uh, we're going to do a show. It's going to be all about Google photo albums on our show on Sunday. Oh, wow. Kasha from Rome. It was really interesting. We had Yeah, thanks. That was fun. We had a great time. We we did a couple of live. We just went live because we had a good signal. We used the Google Fi the whole time. Uh, sometimes we use well. Sometimes we use local Wi-Fi because it was good enough. But for the most part, when uh, the Wi-Fi was not good enough, the Google Fi signal was. And uh, we talked about that in our Zoom meeting yesterday with our yeah. our premium members. That was fun. So how's everybody doing? I We're saw good. Ron yesterday. <laughs> Bob, Huey? Yeah, you, I missed the show yesterday. I was watching TV, and when I looked up, I said, oh, darn it. <laughs> oh, wait. We did record this one, and it'll be available for mem members only. So uh, uh, Chris will be sending out. We have a newsletter going out, so it'll be oh. announced in there. Okay, good. For, good. Yeah. Well, it was just nice to see you because you had, we hadn't talked for so long. I thought, where the heck? When are you guys coming back? You were away for a month? Yeah, we were just over a month because oh. of yeah delays on the way home. Mount Etna was putting a lot of ash in the upper atmosphere, and a lot of planes were delayed going through the area. And we just missed our connecting flight in Istanbul coming back to Miami. So we, yeah, we, we went the wrong way to come back. So mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of what happens sometimes when you shop for price. And, uh, but it, it worked out. We had a great time. We met uh, two couples. They were coming over here 
for a cruise. So they were on the same flight, obviously. Uh, they got stuck. Uh, but Turkish Air put us up, uh, drove us out to a hotel about an hour, <laughs> an hour bus ride out of town, out of the airport to a place where we could crash out for a few hours. And then they gave us breakfast and, and carted us back to the airport. But uh, these two couples, uh, one, they were a uh, couple was on their honeymoon and then friends of theirs. So they were Italian. They were from Sicily, from up around uh, Terramino is actually up near Messina. And uh, and so they were they were just a hoot because I mean, on a honeymoon going out and they, they were just great kids. It was wonderful. We had a, we had a great time with them. Nice to have you back. Well, thanks. Nice to be back. And yeah, everything went pretty smoothly. We had great weather. It was just just ideal. So yeah, Chris and I on our on our honeymoon too. You know. <laughs> well, it's a lot better than the last trip to Costa Rica. Was it Costa? No, was it Costa no. Rica? El Salvador. Oh, El Salvador. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just. There's a whole lot of stories that are, you know, we'll, we'll be putting them together somehow about <laughs> our trip, you know, because we had to get tested before we came back. Right. We had to test negative. Uh, so to get the test, uh, we did it wrong. So we paid a lot of extra money in order to do it. And, uh, but I drove, I rented a car over there. It was uh, interesting. And, uh, yeah, we had a when we got married, we we did a big Europe trip, and we rented a car, and we drove down through uh, Italy over the Grossglockner Pass, which was uh, where Hannibal took the the elephants, you know, over. And man, that's that was a high pass into northern Italy there, and uh, we had a um, uh, it was an interesting experience. And we had this little, this tiny little, I think it was a Fiat, and I think my lawnmower had a bigger engine than the car, you know. <laughs> And it, it was, I didn't think it was going to make it up those mountains sometimes. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. We did the, we rented an RV down in New Zealand and we went over Arthur's Pass, which is what they call the, uh, the Southern Alps as 14,000 or something. Anyway, it's up there and uh, I stalled out going up the top. <laughs> oh, it was, and it was a Fiat. It was a, actually, yeah. but yeah. it was it, anyway. It was interesting. It is. I upgraded on this one. We got a BMW. Yeah, be a, right. a nice sedan. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, there you go. Yeah, cost a little extra, but uh, a lot, lot more, a uh, lot, lot easier to drive. Oh yeah, big old diesel. It was great. Chris, what kind of gas prices? Uh, we were paying a little over eight dollars a gallon if uh, with you know because yep. they're sold in liters by the euro right. yep. we figured it out it was a little over eight dollars a gallon like we would have to pay here so it's it's getting up around here it's what seven california yeah oh. yeah well we're, we're not in california no, you're in florida what is it huey it's a regular is 475, but they figure yeah, 473, 475. I believe it should break five. Yeah. Yeah. We're in California, so, 640. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's getting up there in a lot of places in California. It's probably right on par with this, with the prices that they're paying up uh, some of the expensive places. So, yeah, it's. Rip off. Know, it's, you know, it, gas prices in the United States are lower than a lot of places in the world and uh it's artificially low so anyway could you have rented an electric uh there was nothing electric that was available uh no for I, mean, I, I suppose i could have really tried and found something over there but i don't i don't know that that would be a uh, an easy thing to do with charging and such like, uh, not like here where chargers are available. Uh, I saw none 
maybe one, maybe two, hmm. uh, at a couple of uh, uh, grocery stores or supermarkets, supermarkados. <laughs> anyway, you guys got to start, man. Don't let me. Yes. <laughs> well, we'll. Uh... <clears throat> we've got a couple of minutes left uh, yeah, okay. before we start i mean there, there's a bunch of other people here i don't want to yeah monopolize the conversation so well we will we'll start in about uh two minutes i guess we've got um for those of you who don't know um <clears throat> maybe you're new here the show starts at nine o'clock so we're having a a little chat to, uh beforehand and we'll uh <clears throat> we'll start shortly have some coffee, man. Your your throat sounds. I great. know it's um it's, <laughs> it's too much coffee. I think. Yeah. Matt okay. Pro has his hand up. Go ahead, Greg. Hey, um, diesel is a byproduct of gasoline, and in the stages of making the gasoline, it's like thirty uh, percent less mm -hmm. when they refine it and separate it. Mm -hmm. So, it, like uh, Bob said, it is a real ripoff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, diesel was a little cheaper than gas over there. Usually over here, gas is a little more uh, expensive that way, uh, or less expensive than diesel. Uh, my last RV was a big diesel, and uh, yeah. But all right, we got to start the show. Let's uh, let's get ready. I'm going to mute everybody. Yep. <clears throat> Good morning, Tech for Senior. It's uh, episode 115. It is the 6th of June. It's June already. Uh, welcome everyone to the show today. Uh, now that it's, uh, I, it, I'm so pleased that we have 75 people in the audience because, of course, on the other channel, it is the big Apple Developers Conference this today. So I'm sure everybody's over there watching all the new new products from Apple. Anyway, uh, welcome. We have a big show for you today. Uh, I always say thank you for coming because it is your enthusiasm that keeps us going and keeps us producing the videos. Uh, this, of course, is our Tech for Senior Monday show. We also have a show on Thursday, Tech for Senior Live, where we get together with the usual gang and go over the weekly news. Uh, we also... Uh, take that and we podcast it. So if you uh, you miss our two shows in a week, you can also listen to our podcast. We also tape this and so this will be available for replay if you want to listen to any of the um, listen to it over we should have it up on our channel uh, later on later on today, as well as the individual as well as the, individ the individual segments in there will be of course available as well. Um, so uh, this week is uh, is a, is a big week. Lots of exciting things happening. Uh, as I mentioned to you, um, uh, the Apple Developer Conference is on, and we will uh, be able to see um, what all the new Apple products are. And on a personal note, um, all the video editing I do uh, is done through a software program called Camtasia. And uh, we, uh, I spend about six hours a day in Camtasia, so it's a, it is, it is my right arm. And of course, tomorrow will be the release of their 2022 edition. So we'll see about uh, all the new features that uh, that will be listed as well. We also have a premiere service where we take these um, service that we take all our what we did a year ago. And we um, create three sections in there so that we can, um, and we have that available for you at half past the hour. And today I'm going to be talking <laughs> on a blood test with your smartwatch. 
So in, in, instead of going and getting jabbed, can you use your smartwatch? Uh, so uh, we'll be talking about that. Uh, how to pin an application and file to the taskbar in Windows. Huey's going to talk on that. And I'm going to talk about how to install Android apps on your Chromebook. So those are three, um, three um, uh, topics that we're going to talk about uh, on, um, at, on our Premiere service at half past the hour. So let me introduce everybody today. Uh, of course, you all know the Huey Poplick. Of course, uh, Huey is, uh, is our co-host here. Huey, you've had a good week. You're, you're binge watching uh, on Bosch, I hear. What's, yeah, what's... I, I binge watched uh, Bosch, seven seasons of regular Bosch. And then the, the, uh, the new one, uh, the Bosch Legacy, is, I got one season out and I finished it up uh, late last night. Well, <laughs> so eight, eight seasons of it. Hey, have you got your new watch? What's happening with your new watch? I, I, I put it on the little stand that I bought for it to charge it. And every once in a while, it just doesn't sit right. And I pick it up and it's at 17%. So I, it's right now it's sitting there charging because I didn't charge it properly. Uh, okay. All right. But I'm also getting ready. Sunday is the CFCS Windows Cigar ready. Oh, right. Does that come up again? Yep. So uh, uh, if you're not registered for it or you're not familiar with it, uh, go to Huey.net and sign up for my newsletter because it will be going out at the end of the week and it'll give you all the information on how to watch it and and what's out there. So that's the Windows. Uh, we talk about Windows. Windows. There you go. Excellent. Thank you. And Bob is off to Amarillo, Texas after that's the show. Good. Yeah, that'd be a first stop. Uh, eventually, I'll wind up close to Dallas, and then I have family in Amarillo. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'll be I'll be visiting my family who are close to the uh, shoot senior moment. Why did that happen when you're doing the show and not before the show? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we talk about Amarillo, and um, fortunately, Ray was here because I said, <clears throat> I've been to Amarillo, Texas. What's that song? Ray, what's the song? Amarillo by morning. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> Only I'll be there by evening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And uh, <clears throat> so good, safe travels. You'll, will you be, uh, you'll be doing the show from uh, Texas next week? Yep. Amazing what the internet can do, eh? Doesn't matter where you are, as long as you've got reliable internet access. And go. I'll find that out on Friday. <laughs> there you go. And of course, uh, Ray, Pine, Arizona. What's happening in Pine? Well, you know, we're under uh, the uh, proverbial annual fire watch now. We're not allowed to have barbecues outside anymore. So uh, my, my cooker is going to stay... Uh, uncooking for a while but uh hopefully we'll get through this uh july is always the month for the monsoons so we're looking forward to july coming sooner than later and you told us you're getting your big motor home out to go to the grand canyon i'm getting my small motor home out to go to the north rim of the grand canyon oh really okay we'll go to the south rim but the north rim is a little bit more remote a little bit harder to get to from where I am, but I've been there once before and the views are just spectacular. It's a whole different feeling being on the North Rim and you're up over 8,000 feet too. All right, uh, thank you. And um, Oklahoma, oh, there you go. And uh, oh, you're, rain, you've had I'm lots sorry, of rain. kind of broke up. Um, yeah. The weather is beautiful here. We've had lots of rain. Everything is very green. I don't know how long that is going to last, but we're enjoying it. But I want to tell you, I have the gadget that you won't believe tomorrow. I'm not going to. All I'm going to tell you, it involved an unusual way of using a smartphone. Oh, okay. All right. Um, well, get your well, purses ready. I think some people might get some buyers. <laughs> some buyers. <laughs> okay. Well, <clears throat> which brings me up. I forgot to mention our newsletter, of course, because um, we, we have a newsletter that comes out on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And tomorrow, of course, Bill James puts his gadget article in that everybody wants to read. And, <laughs> you're, and he's going to mention 
he's going to mention the gadget of the, of the week or the gadget the, of the of the gadget of the week i guess the only yes. problem we get we get some complaints because people are spending too much money on these gadgets but <laughs> my wife will not let me read the articles <laughs> oh tomorrow you're going to be tempted it's um, unbelievable just keep in mind <laughs> using a smartphone in the most unusual way. There you go, okay. The, well, we look we look forward to that. And of course, Dewey is here, but he uh, said he's not gonna talk to us today because he's running around uh, uh, doing a bunch of things to get organized. So uh, hello, hello, Dewey, but uh, I know he's uh, he's listening, but uh, but uh, he's, he's a busy guy. All right, uh, let's get going with the show. Bob, uh, are you ready to roll? I am. Here is the Avast Security News Roundup for the week ending June 3rd, 2022. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and get involved. Twitter was fined $150 million for selling user data. According to a court complaint filed by the Department of Justice, while Twitter represented to users that it collected their telephone numbers and email addresses to secure their accounts, Twitter failed to disclose that it also used their contact information to aid advertisers in reaching their preferred audiences. The document listed the offense as occurring between May 2013 and September 2019. In addition to paying the $150 million penalty, the settlement requires the company also to improve its compliance practices. Avast security evangelist Louis Garones commented that this was a well-deserved fine. Violating users' privacy in such a way is outrageous, he said. If Twitter has behaved the same way with all its users, it could be facing fines way higher for violating Europe's GDPR. Twitter makes an annual revenue of $5 billion, with 90% of the money coming from advertisers. For more on this story, see The Guardian. Unfortunately, there's no end in sight for the chip shortage. A computer chip shortage caused by a supply chain disruption is driving manufacturers to come up with creative solutions to keep their business afloat. Computer chips have been hard to come by since the pandemic slowed down supply chains. Then the situation was exacerbated by trade tensions between the U.S. and China and the Russia invasion of Ukraine. Car makers are especially limited by the lack of chips, and some have taken to harvesting semiconductors from washing machines as a temporary source. For more, see Wired. A new WhatsApp account hijacking method discovered. Researchers have found a call forwarding trick that can lead to WhatsApp account takeovers. The ruse requires social engineering and several preconditioned settings. First, the hacker must use social engineering to convince the victim to make a call to a certain number with a special hashtag or asterisk code in front of it. That code triggers the victim's mobile carrier to apply call forwarding to the number that follows. Then the attacker registers WhatsApp using the victim's information, choosing to receive the one-time passcode via voice call. After getting the passcode, the attacker completes registration of the victim's account on their device and sets up two-factor authentication to lock the victim out. For more, see Bleeping Computer. Amazon moves to web-only purchases for Kindle eBooks. Because of Google's required cut of 15% on all in-app purchases of digital content for apps sold on the Play Store, Amazon has shifted to only selling its Kindle books online and not in-app. 
In an email, the company explained that users will have to purchase digital content through their web browser and then access the books in their app's digital library. The email noted that the change was necessary to remain in compliance with updated Google Play Store policies. Google said it will remove non-compliant apps from the Play Store starting this week. To learn more, see CNET. A Windows Zero Day exploit was active for seven weeks. A critical code vulnerability in all supported versions of Windows has been under active exploit for seven weeks, allowing attackers to install malware on victims' machines without triggering the system's defenses. The flaw stems from the Microsoft Support Diagnostic Tool, which is called using the URL protocol from a calling application such as Word. Attackers exploiting the flaw can run arbitrary code that lets them install programs, view, change, or delete data, and create new accounts. Microsoft has not yet issued a patch. In the meantime, it advises users to disable the MSDT URL protocol. To learn how, see Ars Technica. For more space based services, the interdependence also has security costs. Authors of an article for the World Economic Forum's annual meeting argue fears over the security of space infrastructure have been exacerbated amidst Russia's war in Ukraine. The Kremlin targeted a commercial space based communications network on the first day of the conflict. SpaceX's Starlink network has likely also been subject to attacks over the involvement in supporting Ukraine with means to communicate. For more details on this, see Cyber News. This week's must read on the Avast blog. It's time for us to review the annual Verizon Data Breach Investigation Report a compendium of cybersecurity trends that offers some of the best analysis in our field. Read up to find out more at the link below. And that wraps up this week's Avast Security News Roundup. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again next week. Okay, give me a bye second bye. to change to the next item. The infamous killed by Google appears to be added again. Bringing Google Meet features to Google Duo for a single integrated video solution. That was the headline at the Google Workshop blog. And I've listed the link below in case you want to follow and read that entire blog. If you find this video helpful, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and get involved. In the blog post, Google states the following. To support the millions of users who rely on our technology for video calls and meetings, we've made deep investments in both Google Duo and Google Meet. For those using Duo as their cross-platform video calling app service, We've introduced new features like group calls for up to 32 people, the addition of doodles, masks, and fun effects with family mode, and video calling on tablets, foldables, smart devices, and TVs. That sounds like a nice enhancement to Google Duo. Here's where the confusion comes in, because Google also posted this in that same blog post. As part of our continued investment in helping people stay connected and to adapt to evolving users' needs, we're upgrading the Duo experience to include all Google Meet features. This integrated experience will provide users with a single solution service for both video calling and meetings with people across their lives. We're committed to making the transition from Duo to Meet as smooth as possible. Admins will receive an email detailing the impact to their organizations. 
We are committed to making the transition from duo to meet as smooth as possible. So what started out as an announcement about an enhancement to Google Duo is actually announcing the demise of Google Duo. A bit strange since Google Meet is the new kid on the block and Google Duo has been around since August 16th of 2016. From Google's standpoint, this makes perfect sense. Maintaining two different chat apps makes no sense. Concentrating on one app does make sense. Since Google Meet was designed with features that Google Duo never had, deleting or evolving Duo does make sense. As long as Meet still has the function to only make a phone call, this winds up as a win for all of us. It still would have been nice if the headline had been a bit clearer, like, Google Duo is now Google Meet. Enjoy the enhanced features. I hope that clears up the upcoming merger of Google Duo and Google Meet and clears up any confusion. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Thanks, Bob. Um, it's, um, it is confusing, isn't it? it that's, yeah, and I use Duo all the time. Well, they start off by saying we're enhancing Duo, and then they say, well, no, actually, Duo is going away. We're just going to incorporate everything, incorporate everything into Meet. Right. Okay. <laughs> also, um, the um, the visual was not very good on that. I, I suspect it's probably with your your uh, your bandwidth on your tower out there isn't 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 great today. All right, um, <clears throat> let's uh, and I'll correct that. So when when the when the, when you have it out this afternoon, um, I can correct that in the uh, replay. All right, let's uh, let's talk about paying with your smartwatch. <clears throat> I did it. I used my Fitbit Sense to pay a credit card bill at a restaurant. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up your watch as a credit card. You'll want to watch this video till the end because there are some important setup features you need to know. So let's get on with it. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior, where we make videos to help seniors with technology. Today, we're going to talk about using your smartwatch to pay as a credit card. Now, if you like this video and you'd like to be notified for future videos we make, just click the subscribe down below and that notification bell. If you do that, we'll send you a notification each time we make a video that will help you with technology. So let's get on with it and see how to use your smartwatch as a credit card. Why would you want to use your smartwatch as a credit card? I can think of three reasons right off the top. Security, security, security. Those are three excellent reasons to be using your smartwatch instead of hauling out your credit card from your wallet. Let me explain how this works. The first thing is speed. You'll just be able to tap and pay. You have to enter a pin code into your watch before using it. But then once you do that, you can just tap and pay and you're gone. You don't actually have to fumble around finding your credit card, get your phone out of your purse and open the app. When I go shopping, I'm really amazed at how people store their credit cards and secure uh, devices. The first thing is uh, I see a lot of men who just have loose credit cards in their pockets, probably because they don't have a wallet. Uh, with women, of course, they have purses. Uh, I see lots of times when I'm shopping, uh, the purse sits in the buggy, and oftentimes the person is distracted. They're busy looking at uh, items they want to purchase, maybe doing a, uh, a lookup on their app on a phone to see what the best price is, and they're not keeping an eye on their purse. So this is a very dangerous situation. Again, with payment on your watch, you don't need your phone with you. It can be sitting in the car. You don't need your purse with you. You don't need any credit cards. All you need is something secure on your wrist. And it's really hip and cool. Imagine paying for your bill at a restaurant with your smartwatch. 
You may be the first person the waitress has seen. And you'll be a senior too. That's being cool and hip. So one of the big reasons. I usually review smartwatches for health applications. And if you want to see the videos I've made, just click the link above or it'll be in the show notes below and you can watch the videos regarding health applications on your smartwatch. I own two smartwatches. I own the Fitbit Sense and I own the Galaxy Watch 4. I usually review three watches, the Apple Watch, Fitbit Sense, and Galaxy Watch 4. I'm going to talk about those watches today to be used as a credit card for purchasing items in a store. There are other watches that of course will do this, but we're going to talk about these three watches today. Using your smartwatch as a credit card is just a little bit different than using your smartphone. In this video, I'll explain the differences and give you some helpful suggestions to make the process go easier. If you have an iPhone, then you'll be using Apple Pay along with your Apple Watch. This works very well and is available in most countries with most credit cards. The setup is easy. I, of course, have a Pixel 6 phone, so I can't demonstrate this for you, but it, the setup is very simple. And out of all the devices, this is the easiest to use and most widely accepted. So you're in good hands with Apple. All right, for the non-Apple users, I want to take all the Android phones and categorize them as Samsung and non-Samsung. So if you're using a non-Samsung phone, then you most likely will be using Google Pay. The problem with Google Pay is it won't work with your Fitbit Sense and all the Fitbit line. Now you're going to say, hold on, Google owns Fitbit. Why won't Google Pay work with a Fitbit? Well, that's just the way it is. So if you want to use your Fitbit Sense, you have to use Fitbit Pay. Fitbit Pay is found in the Fitbit app on your phone under the Fitbit wallet. And I'll explain how to set this up in just a minute. But it's different than Google Pay and it has some limitations. First of all, there's a geographical limitation. What do I mean by that? Well, if you live in the United States, it's not a problem. It's pretty well universal and will work well for you. But if you live in Canada or other countries around the world, then you have to be careful with this. And in my case, when I went to set up Fitbit Pay, out of my five Canadian credit cards, none of them would be accepted. So I had to use my US registered American Express card and it worked. So with Fitbit Pay, you're more limited in the countries that will uh, allow you to set this up. So if you're planning to use your Fitbit for payment or thinking about purchasing a Fitbit, you'll want to check the country you're in to make sure that the credit cards you have will work with Fitbit. That is one of the reasons I'm so excited about the Pixel Watch coming out this fall. I certainly hope that the Google Pay will work with the Pixel Watch. It's got to, right? Come on, Google. So if you have a Galaxy 4 watch, then you must use Samsung Pay. Samsung Pay is very similar to Google Pay, but it doesn't work on a non-Samsung phone. So my Pixel 6 is not compatible with my Galaxy 4 watch. So if you plan on using your Galaxy 4 watch, you must have a Samsung phone and you must use Samsung Pay. So if those factors all line up, then there is no problem. The setup process is about the same. It works about the same, but you have to have all those ducks in a row to make this work. Now you start by opening the Fitbit app and you'll see that on the screen. Just choose the Fitbit app and let's open it. Now when you open the Fitbit app, you may get a little bit confused. I want you to go down to the bottom and you'll see those big icons there. And I want you to click on the today. Okay, come down here at right to the bottom on the far left, click today. Now, once you've done that, I want you to come up to the top 
and come right up to the top left side and you'll see an image there it might be a bit washed out I want you to click that it'll be the top left image as I'm showing you in this diagram now that will put you into your Fitbit account I want you to scroll down now till you see the Fitbit Sense icon and I want you to click that now that will bring up the Fitbit Sense app and I want you to open that and you'll see that there is an icon there that says wallet you're going to click the wallet that's going to direct you through a series of menus called an easy way to pay it also will show you supported banks and credit cards now in order to set up Fitbit pay on your smartwatch you must set up a device lock for your oh, watch and there are two options you can choose uh, the one I did called the recommended one or enabled and you have to enter a pin code if you take off the device or every 24 hours the other option is enable for Fitbit pay only and you enter a pin for payments so you have your choice of A or B and that is your choice but this must be completed before you go on so that your watch is secure this is the final menu you get you simply click on the top payment debit icon and you'll enter your credit card number or debit card in there there then will be a prompt and you will receive a text message with a pin code which you enter in to confirm the loop that you are now linked to your credit card I'm not going to go into the details on this it's very simple and straightforward and it's the same as you would have done when you set this up on your phone all right let's see how this works here is my watch and I'm going to enter the pin code once the pin code is entered I can now access the wallet here is the wallet when I click this here is my credit card that simply has to be held close to the reader here's a demonstration where I use my watch watch my wrist as it rolls over I simply come close to the machine and of course it bleeps and the transaction is complete it's that simple paying with your smartphone it's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior remember the subscribe and notification and we'll notify you when we get some more videos till then have a great day and I made a mistake at the very last I said smartphone instead of smartwatch darn it, I'll have to correct that anyway uh, anyway uh, I know there might be some questions about that we will talk about that uh, in the Q&A all right um, now I wanted to play another uh, short video for you on um, this is actually about Ray's music uh, I made this about a year ago but there may be some of you who are new here and are not aware about uh, the Ray's playlist where all his music can be found so I wanted just to replay this short video about four minutes and I just wanted to play this so that you can um, have a look at this Hey, it's Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. You know, I live in Comox, British Columbia, and I'm out for a bike ride on my e-bike. Now, we started at my house, as you see with the circle there, and we're going to come down Hawkins Road, and we're going to come down across over Goose Spit. And as we drive along, we'll come out to HMCS Quadra. Quadra is the cadet base for Canada. All the cadets across Canada come out to Quadra to do their training. And you know, we're going to have a nice bike ride. You're going to see us coming along as we go across the spit towards Quadra and then turn around and go back up this big hill. But I am so glad I have an e-bike. And you know, what is so nice about this is I'm listening to Ray's music. All those great music clips that he plays on our show, I'm listening to them as I cycle along. And you too could be able to listen to them if you subscribe to our newsletter. Yes, the Tech for Senior newsletter. Uh, let me show you how to do this in the links below. In Tuesday's newsletter, this is Ray's segment. If you look closer, you'll see at the bottom here it says click this link for over 50 songs well they're going to add as ray continues on adding songs this list is going to get bigger 
So when we click that link, watch what happens. And this is on a Windows 10 PC. So when we click the link, it's going to bring us to, here's the list. Here's all 50 songs, all there for you to enjoy and play. So how are we going to save these? So as we come up, we're simply going to bookmark this link. You see, I'm going to click the little star there, add bookmark. And it says raise music list. That's all you have to do. And we're going to save it to our bookmark bar. And then we're going to come back and here it is. Click that and you will be able to listen to all Ray's great music. That's wonderful. So you only have to click the link once and set up the bookmark and we'll add all the songs for you. So as I'm riding my bike, we're getting closer to the entrance to the Naval Cadet Camp, which of course we can't go in and we're gonna have to turn around and come back out. But I don't mind because I'm listening to Willie Nelson and all those great tunes that you could too. But you'll find the link in our newsletter, our Tuesday newsletter. How am I doing it? I don't have my Windows 10 PC with me. Well, I'm streaming the music off my phone. Let's see what it looks like streaming the music on your phone. Whether you have an iPhone or an Android phone, you can get the music as well. Here's the entrance to uh, HMC Quadra. I got to slow down a little bit. This is a big bike and I got to turn it around. So uh, I'm a little bit wobbly on my turns, but I think we can do it if I just squeak here. Let's see here. We'll do a bit of a turn. Yikes. Am I going to make it? Am I going to make it? I did. I did. And here we are going back. Let's look at the Android version of YouTube. All right. Now I'm listening to this streaming the music on my cell phone. So here is YouTube on my cell phone. When I open my YouTube application, here is Mary's music list. And then here's all the great songs, again, by Willie Nelson, and all the songs that Ray has for us, all streaming live to my phone. So by saving the playlist, you will have over three hours of continuous entertainment and we'll be keeping it updated as Ray adds new songs. Wow. Well, let me just listen to some music as I finish my bike ride. All right. So uh, I thought that would be good to show again, just in case people haven't, uh, new people have come in and are not aware of what's, uh, what's happening. All right, Huey, are you ready to roll? Starlink report is coming up. Uh, let me find the right place. The Starlink Report. The Starlink Report. This is the Starlink Report for June 6th, 2022. I'm Huey Poplock. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Starlink, the satellite internet division of Elon Musk's rocket company SpaceX, has developed a second generation of satellites for low Earth orbit but they're too big to launch for now. The Gen 2 satellite is considerably larger than the more than 2,500 Starlink satellites now orbiting 340 miles above the Earth's surface. Gen 2 satellites are 22 feet long and weigh 2,755 pounds. By contrast, the first generation satellites weigh 573 pounds or about one-fifth as much as Gen 2. To get the much heavier Gen 2 satellites into orbit, SpaceX will have to get its Starship heavy lift rocket ready. The Starship is the most powerful rocket ever built. It's made up of two stages, the first stage booster called Super Heavy and an upper stage called Starship. The U.S. Federal 
Aviation Administration is conducting an environmental review of the reusable Starship rocket and extended its self-imposed deadline an additional two weeks, suggesting the final report is coming in mid-June. SpaceX's progress on Gen 2 shows how much further along Starlink is when compared to its competitors. Amazon Project Kuiper isn't even off the ground. OneWeb, a satellite internet constellation half owned by the UK government, has 428 satellites in orbit at a higher 750 mile altitude. Canada's Telstat has 188 LEO, or Low Earth Orbit, satellites in space, but is facing production delays. Starlink has already brought high-speed internet for many rural communities out of reach of broadband. Starlink, with help from the U.S. government, has been able to provide internet access to 150,000 Ukrainians in the midst of a war. Demand is growing in different parts of the world for Starlink service. In the fourth quarter of last year, Starlink provided 100 megabit speeds to 15 additional countries. Gen 2 satellites are almost an order of magnitude greater than the first generation units. Some Chinese researchers are worried by Starlink's rapid progress. Musk satellite constellation is enough of a national security threat that recommendations have been made to either disable or destroy SpaceX's satellites. Researchers in China say U.S. military drones and stealth fighter jets could see data transmission speeds increase by more than 100 times with Starlink. NASA has voiced concern about Starlink's proposed 42,000 satellite strong constellation, saying it may lead to a significant increase in the frequency of conjunction events and possible impacts to NASA's science and human spaceflight missions. The space agency isn't suggesting that SpaceX stop its work, but that it conduct testings to prevent collisions. Astronomers fear that satellite mega constellations will obscure the night sky when they attempt to capture long exposure imagery. Earlier this month, the head of Russia's Roscosmos Space Agency apparently sent a threat to the SpaceX CEO Elon Musk after Starlink technology was supplied to Ukraine and used to help Ukrainian forces against the Russians in the country's ongoing war. Starlink's new RV plan lets buyers skip the line if they pay more for worse service. It costs $25 extra each month. You'll need the full price up front, and your connection is always deprioritized. SpaceX's Starlink is still scaling up its constellation of Internet satellites, and the service is only intended for use at the specific location where the user is registered. But for an additional $25 a month, it will let users take their dish somewhere else every now and then with the service's new portability feature. For that package with portability, you still need to have at-home service first, and it warns users that they will be deprioritized while away from home. But if you're a van lifer or an RV enthusiast who is willing to buy a dish without having a home address with prior prioritized service, now Starlink for RVs will let you sign up and grab a dish for access right now. There's no waiting required, although it's worth mentioning the service is not set up to work while in motion, and as Elon Musk helpfully mentions, the antenna is a bit too large for your car. Not everyone is happy that Starlink for RVs has provided a no waiting option, even as some fans who signed up for home service have shipping dates that aren't due until 2023. Effectively, that translates to a big warning for anyone who might try to use the RV program intended for people headed into the wilderness where other internet access may not be possible as a way to get Starlink home internet right now. It's your choice, but it would cost extra and likely have slower service making waiting seem more worthwhile. Starlink's internet service is now available in 32 countries around the world. Countries and regions marked on its map as available, including parts of Australia, 
Brazil, Chile, and the U.S., Canada, and most of Europe can have their equipment shipped immediately. The service has steadily expanded since existing beta last year with availability in 12 countries as of September 2021 and 25 countries last February. Starlink's map shows areas as marked available, waitlist, and coming soon. The service has potential of near global reach at latitudes below around 60 degrees north, but availability is granted on a country-by-country -country basis. Hawaiian teams with Elon Musk company for in-flight internet. Elon Musk SpaceX is moving into the business of providing internet service to airline passengers. Hawaiian Airlines said in April that it will offer free wireless internet service from SpaceX's Starlink satellite network on flights between Hawaii and the U.S., mainland, Asia, and Oceania. Honolulu-based Hawaiian said it's the first deal between Elon Musk's space company and a major airline, although charter operator JSX announced a deal with SpaceX as well. Hawaiian said the service will allow passengers to stream content or play online games with people on the ground with, without having to go through registration pages or payment portals. The airline did not indicate plans to offer the service on flights between islands in Hawaii. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off carrying 53 Starlink satellites into space. The launch marked SpaceX's third satellite mission in five days, following missions on May 13th and May 14th. The Starlink Report. And there you go. There you go. It's getting more expensive each month. Yep. <laughs> it's not a cheap service. Wow. And it looks like they're not going to have any uh, new satellites up there in the near future. But the... Uh, because that that big rocket hasn't even they haven't even tested it yet. They're waiting for approval to even run tests on it. Hmm. Interesting. All right, thanks, Huey. Uh, Bob, you ready? Yes, sir. Will Hollywood lawsuits shut down your favorite VPN? If you want to torrent copyrighted material. A VPN will hide what you're doing. Well, for now, at least, it's up to Hollywood. Torrenters will soon no longer be able to hide behind anonymous IP addresses provided by VPNs, and they're taking VPN providers to court to make it happen. Not just a concern for BitTorrent users. Over the last five years, several VPN providers have found themselves on the receiving end of legal actions on behalf of the movie industry. Some cases have been won by VPNs, but others have led to VPNs pledging to track certain users or even going out of business altogether. See the full article at How to Geek. Just follow the link listed. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like share, subscribe, and get involved. Hollywood and Torrenters The biggest change for torrenters has been that you can now be fined for committing software piracy. If you were to use BitTorrent now to download a popular Hollywood film, you could expect the notice to appear in your digital or physical mailbox warning you to knock it off or face fines. And these fines are no joke either. In 2009, a Boston jury made a man pay $675,000 in damages for downloading 30 songs, while in 2021, Danish police arrested six people that were running a torrenting site. The author of this article has also received menacing letters from copyright watchdogs while living in the United States in 2016, threatening unnamed fines and actions for downloading a Hollywood film. Torrenting and VPNs. To avoid these punitive measures, there is one powerful tool torrenters can use, virtual private networks. These handy tools can spoof your IP address, one of the most important ways in which you can be identified online, 
and thus make torrenting safe again, even if a copyright watchdog sees your torrenting files. There's nothing that can be done as you can't be tracked. Of course, you could go up to a VPN in question and request users' details to find out who has been torrenting what. But as most VPNs don't keep logs, or at least they claim not to keep them, there is nothing to find. Hollywood VPN Lawsuits that hasn't prevented studios and movie distributors from trying, though, and over the last few years, plenty of suits have been filed. Some are focused on forcing VPNs to start logging user information, while others have focused on getting remuneration or even shutting services down. A little more serious was the lawsuit brought against Liquid VPN, a small provider which rather aggressively advertised itself as a great solution to torrent and streaming pirated material. The suit alleged $10 million in damages. It seems that rather than pay, Liquid VPN upped sticks and simply disappeared. Pretty unpleasant for anybody that prepaid a year of use. To a certain extent, you can expect suits, like the example mentioned, after all, the film industry is worth billions, and they don't want to miss out on a single penny due to piracy. It's no wonder, then, that when a company lawyer sees a loophole they could exploit, they're going to give it a shot. However, it seems like Hollywood is now turning to some decidedly nasty tactics to persuade judges to act against VPNs. In their defense, the VPNs in question put up that the Hollywood lawyers were pretty much just trying to rile up the judge and jury by equating their services with giving a platform to such nasty activity. In the end, this suit was settled on undisclosed terms, but it does show that Hollywood is willing to pull out all the stops in their battle against piracy. If lawyers can equate VPNs with the truly hyenas crimes like distributing child porn or placing bomb threats in the midst of people, and especially judges, Hollywood wins and we lose. I concur with the opinion that VPNs will see their activities badly curtailed in the future. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bob. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look good for the future. No, unfortunately. Ron, you're muted. Just before we get going, um, I'm going to say goodbye to um, our YouTube um, fans over there. If you want to pop over and participate in the Q&A, we have uh, spots left over here. So, uh, Ray's going to be getting uh, going with his uh, with his music shortly. Um, I do want to play. Uh, uh, so so as far as YouTube goes, we'll see you next uh, next week, same time, same place. And don't forget uh, our premiere event. Uh, and I'll put the link in the uh, in the chat. And also, it went out in our newsletter. Um, however, uh, just before Ray starts, I want to. I just want to play a little video. And now we have Ray Baxter. <laughs> Love that, Ron. I got a little bit dizzy, though, watching my face go round and round. You're still sharing. What do you think of that? Did, did you like that? I thought, yeah, I thought that just fit. I thought that would just go perfect. <laughs> You're still sharing on YouTube. Am I still? Yes. Oh, yeah. I forgot to tell.